When I heard Fede Alvarez was taking on the Alien franchise, it instantly skyrocketed to be one of my most anticipated movies of whatever year it was coming out, mostly for the fact that it is Fede Alvarez, the director of the Evil Dead remake, and Don't Breathe, directing a brand new Alien movie, and let me tell you, he does not disappoint. What's going on, buddy? Welcome back to a brand new non-spoiler review for Alien Romulus. I'm sure many of your guys' most anticipated films for this year. It personally was for me as well. I was very excited for this, and this comes from someone who didn't really grow up with the Alien franchise, but has really come to love it over the last, like, I'd say decade of movies, and specifically, like, in chronologically order, when you look at, like, Prometheus, Alien Covenant, Alien, and Aliens, like, those four movies, like, are just dynamite and awesome and I was really hoping Alien Romulus was going to be able to suffice and place itself neatly between Alien and Aliens and I'm so happy to say that it does perfectly and for me this movie really hit the nail on the head on what it needed to be but if you're new and you haven't seen any of the trailers well what is Alien Romulus about well it's about a bunch of young adults who scavenge the deep ends of a space station and after these young space colonizers come face to face with the most terrifying life form in the universe that's all you need to know without getting into spoilers. Again, make sure to leave your thoughts down below. Hit that like and subscribe button. Look out for that alien ranking later this week. And let's dive into this. So starting with my pros, the number one thing I want to really call out right now are the performances. Because when you come off of like Alien and Aliens, you know, you have the amazing Sigourney Weaver. And no matter what, no matter who her supporting cast is, which they're all fantastic as well in those movies, you have Sigourney to really lay back on. And even when you get to like the films in like the third and fourth franchise, well, they are very rough to get through. Sigourney Weaver is hands down one of the best parts about those. No matter what situation they were putting her in, she was giving it her all as Ripley. And that was one of the things that I was so gracious about. And when you get into like the prequel films such as Prometheus and Alien Covenant, David, for me, was the most intriguing characters out of all those movies, but I can't say that for everyone that he's going to be as iconic as Ripley. I will say right now, after just watching this one movie, the cast in here is bar none fantastic. I'm not going to say that they're as iconic as Ripley right now, but like of the likes of like Kaylee Spaney, who is just dynamite in here. Every single scenario, she is great. I've loved seeing how much she's grown in just like the last year and a half of like her performances in Priscilla, Civil War, and now this, all three different performances easily relating to the last. And for me in this one, it might be my personal favorite of hers. I really liked her in Civil War though, so it kind of goes hand in hand on those two. But there's something about this one that really just gripped me and specifically her relationship with David Johnson who I thought was also phenomenal in this like his character and again I don't want to get into spoilers in case you haven't seen the trailer and what his character is and how it's played out David is just really great brings this gravitas to the role that I was genuinely kind of surprised by and alongside that like Isabella Mercedes Archie Ranax, Ellen Wu, Spike Fern, every single one of them like give it their all to where like this group of kids or I guess group of young adults, you really just are into their story, locked in and really much are behind on what they're trying to do. They're not just trying to scavenge for a profit. They have a reason to be scavenging and instantly and early on. You're cheering for them to succeed, which easily relates back to when shit hits the fan, you are right then and there cheering them on. And that also just all goes to Fede Alvarez, who I think is one of those very unique horror directors, someone who every time he touches a property, there's something unique and different to it. It all started with the Evil Dead remake when a majority of us were introduced to Fede Alvarez. I know that was my introduction to him, and it blew my mind because I grew up with the Evil Dead franchise and really loved it and then watched this remake, and it was more gnarly and grotesque than I could have ever expected, but it felt perfect for the modern genre of horror filmmaking. And then the same thing happens with Don't Breathe, the movie that I didn't know what to expect. I, I just went into it thinking, oh, this is going to be a nice, fun thriller. And it was one of the most intense theater experiences that I've ever personally had. And then, of course, we're going to not talk about the the dragon or the girl with the dragon tattoos, the uh, little sequel that he did, or I don't even remember what it, the hell it was called. But now he has this. And there's something about Alien Romulus that just, again, easily makes it to be his best movie yet. 
And I think a lot of it is the way that, you know, I, I got to go to San Diego Comic-Con and hear him talk about the movie. And there's a lot of stuff. Sometimes you hear directors talk and it's a lot of hype noise. And Fede just felt so personable with it. And what one of the things he really said that stuck out to me was like the fact that he said, you don't have to see an, any other alien film to understand this. There will be callbacks for sure. A lot of these films will. And there are callbacks in here. And I actually think the callbacks in here are great. And we'll talk about that in a second. But the thing that really stuck out to me is how he really talked about how he was passionate about making the entire franchise not feel like, oh, like just because this movie sucks to the general going audience, it didn't happen. He makes an amalgamation of every alien film in here and kind of like mixes it into one. You like horror in your alien films, you get horror in here. You like the grotesque and weird and gory shit that happens in alien films, we have that in here. Oh, you like the mythology and world building stuff of alien, we have that. We also have the action, generic and giant action set pieces as well, we have that. Every little bit, and again, that goes to even Alien Resurrection, which I think has some of the weirdest and gnarliest stuff, and that movie sucks. And <laughs> Trust me, that movie sucks. But the good, weird aspect of that is placed inside of here. And I like that Fede was not afraid to not just give a love letter. It's like more than a love letter, in my opinion, to just the Alien franchise. It's an amalgamation of what makes the Alien franchise so special. And I really loved what he was able to do here. And I think, again, his direction also ties into a lot of the terrifying sequences. There's an entire Don't Breathe sequence where you're just holding your breath and the sound has basically just been stripped from the scene. There's a whole zero gravity sequence that, again, keeps you on edge and really much gave me goosebumps down my skin. And of course, with Fede Alvarez, you know you're going to be getting some of the most grotesque and twisted bloodbaths. And I'll say this, I don't think this is like one of the goriest movies I've ever seen or specifically even from Fede, but it is very gory and it is very grotesque. And like midway through the movie, I was like, oh, OK, like, you know, it's gory. It Don't get me wrong. But there came a part specifically in the last 20 to 30 minutes that after talking with some people, it seems like you're either for it. Or you're, you you fell off and you thought they went a little bit too far. For me, I fucking loved it. I loved it so much that it literally, like, I, I didn't even know what to expect. And as it just kept ramping and building and building and building till you get introduced to this thing, this, this thing introduced to the plot, it, it just blew my mind. It blew my mind my mind and it literally had my jaw hanging from the floor like the whole usage the way this whole thing played out that's as much as i can say without getting into spoilers but i i was really blown away by that and it's so weird and it's so nasty and it's fucking terrifying a couple jump scares that are really twisted into there that just got right under my skin and like made me feel like i was right then and there Fede does such a fantastic job directing those horror sequences and really bringing it to life and the same thing with the pacing of the movie for almost a two-hour movie it never felt like it was lagging behind it always felt like the plot was moving forward the horror was moving forward and i think some people might even think that this has a slow burn because it is again something special to again like the first two alien films where it is a lot of slow burn it is a lot of pacing and there's a lot of pacing and build up till you finally meet a face hugger or an alien or whatever jumps into the scenario or situation and i like that fede took that approach here but again, it always felt like we were moving in. And I always felt like I was learning something new about the plot. And another thing that really surprised me about this entire plot was just the start of the movie. And first off, the opening scene, I always think Fede Alvarez does a fantastic job with all of his opening scenes. But this actually might be one of my favorite ones so far of his entire career. And specifically how he intrigues you as the audience to jump right in. But from then on, how it starts off on this mining planet... I liked seeing the culture there and how that builds up. I don't think we got enough of that in the Alien franchise as a whole. And I think just that little glimpse of it all really added a lot of humanity to the characters that we get to follow around on this plot. And plus, it looked gorgeous. Speaking of gorgeous things, this movie is absolutely stunning. I don't know the budget about this movie, but it looks better than like 90% of other films that have come out. And it, it really, again, just 
pops your eyes and you're just visually locked into every single scenario. The cinematography was just top notch. Again, whether they're flying in space, whether they're on the spacecraft, whether they're on the planet, it did not matter. There is always beauty to be found in the most horrifying situation. And that's where I want to go to the thing that really surprised me was how much world building and mythology that was actually in here. The central plot and some stuff that actually happens inside this movie, specifically towards around the middle part, I was kind of shocked that they went there. I thought this was going to be more of a horror house of trying to just survive the aliens. And well, for the most part, it is that. There's more to it than just that. And those little layers really upped my love for this movie to just say the least again it's really hard to talk about without getting into spoilers because none of the trailers really gave any of this stuff away and then it all goes back into the last 20 to 30 minutes which will be very different for every single person so let's jump into the mixed and my issues with the movie so my mixed aspects i like to talk about like things that i think a lot of people will be leaving the theater talking about and that is primarily the last 20 to 30 minutes after leaving the movie it seemed like some people either really loved what they did in the last 20 to 30 minutes and some people did not at all. But also there's the mix of it where some people just felt okay or liked the first two acts of it where the film feels like it's paying a lot of homage to earlier alien films and specifically in its approach and the storytelling. And then the like the back half is like, holy shit, Fede is just going like right out there. I felt it was like a perfect mix all the way around, specifically even when it gets into the third act and never felt like it went so big so fast, like, holy shit, what's going on? It, it felt like the perfect fluidity of how it goes. I will say, though, it is a little bit predictable. I think if you've seen some of the Alien films, you know the pacing and know how an Alien film builds up, and it is about the exact same pacing of the story. That didn't bother me. It might bother some of you, and some of the predictable nature of certain characters may be a little bit annoying to you. They weren't annoying to me because I thought the characters were outright acting as they should. Now, getting into my issue, and I honestly only really have one. I understand, and again, this is I, I can't dive too much in my issue because it is a spoiler, but there is another thing introduced, same time, midway through, and maybe a little bit more before the midway point. Where when it was introduced, I was like, that's cool. I like that. And then it kept going. And it became a more bigger piece of the plot than I personally expected. And then I left the theater and I thought, it would have been better if they did this. I understand why they did that. But for me, it would have been better if they did this. And that's just me. Again, I can't talk spoilers. I will have a spoiler review out on my podcast next week so look forward to that that'll be found on into the geek first feel free to go check that out but i there's that one thing and when you see the movie i think you'll know exactly what i'm talking about if not feel free to comment down below and we'll have a conversation as well down there because i really want to talk about that one thing that if they would have changed i would have been like oh 10 out of 10 10 out of 10 it would have like worked completely for me but that, that's just me. Again, I'm just rambling at that point. But I think Fede Alvarez has honestly outdone himself with his best movie yet. Alien Romulus isn't just a love letter. It's an amalgamation of the Alien franchise as a whole. Beautiful, terrifying, gnarly, weird, twisted, grotesque, gory, and most of all, deeply layered with mythology and ideas of humanity. Truly a bit blown away by the entire picture. And as someone who didn't fully grow up with the Alien franchise and always love it, I'm so happy to say that I loved Alien Romulus. As I've mentioned, none of you are prepared for the last 20 minutes. Took me and like blew my mind back and I was like, what? There's so much to talk about this movie and I can't wait to have these further discussions in the future once the film is fully out for the public. So with all that said, I'm gonna give Alien Romulus an A. Like this close to an A plus and I think maybe another viewing may push it up there, but who knows? Make sure to leave your thoughts down below, hit that like and subscribe button, look out for my Alien ranking coming probably Saturday or Friday to determine if Alien Romulus is one of the best. Again. I'm not huge on the Alien franchise as a whole sometimes, so you, my ranking may be a little, a, a little, a lot different than yours. So thank you so much again for watching. Of course, until next time, stay classy. Mm -hmm.